What's up guys, Eric here. I wanna bring you my top investing rules. Now you've probably seen this before. This is gonna be a little bit different twist. I'm gonna give you some commentary directed towards 2023 and beyond. Of course, 2022 has been a pretty rough year and it's nearing an end. We wanna talk about how to be a disciplined and patient investor for 2023 and beyond. So what, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cover some slides. I'm going to go through each investing rule. There's 15 of them. And I'm going to talk about each one from a high level and just give some commentary. These are the top investing rules, stock market investing. Now, this is a clip from my masterclass series that you can check out. Eric's top 15 investing rules. If you don't know who I am, I'm Eric. I am Mr. Fired Up Wealth on YouTube, and I quit my 150K base salary plus commission job to do this, to try to help you be a better investor. I've been doing this for 20 years, and I've been investing in growth, and I've been through the dot-com bubble. I've been through the Great Recession and everything in between, and I'm here to try to help you as a long-term investor, someone that's buying stocks, holding them for five-plus years, trying to buy high-quality, high-conviction stocks. Rule number one. Only invest money you can afford to lose. Now, I get questions on this a lot, like what does that mean exactly? What it means is, say you have $50,000 in a savings account and you're gonna buy a house and that's your down payment. You wouldn't wanna invest that money if you need it in a short amount of time. Like say you need it in the next three to six months. You wouldn't wanna invest that money because you can't afford to lose it because you need that money for your down payment. So don't invest money you can't afford to lose. Never use margin. Never do anything stupid like that, okay? Rule number two. Do not buy all shares at once. This is where new investors really mess up when they first start out investing. They don't know how to dollar cost average and how to do it effectively. That's something we teach in Fired Up Wealth. And we do that every single Wednesday by doing chart day and discord, where we're looking at technical levels to give you better entry and exit points for long-term investments. So we're looking at, you know, we're looking at yearly charts, daily candles, and we're trying to use technicals to buy levels and you're being disciplined, especially in a bear market and buying percentages at a time. Now this here says buy 20 to 25%. In a bear market, I've been telling the gang, do that 10%. So in other words, if you want $10,000 in a stock, you might buy 10 different lots, 1,000 at a time at different prices, to try to back into a cost basis. If you think the stock is really attractive, you can change that. So this is case by case, depending where the stock's at. If you think it's bottomed out, you might buy 50% position. But what you never wanna do, in my opinion, is buy all shares at once, and you saw what happened if you did that in 2021. You started as a new investor, you didn't know how to build a portfolio or a blueprint. You opened up a Robinhood or a Fidelity account. You bought a handful of stocks, you called it a portfolio, you bought all of them on one day and you got burned, right? So you want a dollar cost average, you wanna invest in time over a period of time. And you're generally thinking at a five year period or longer, you wanna leave room in case it does go lower because no, how, no matter how good you are as an investor, you might be right in the stock, but you might not be right in the price and you need to leave a little bit of room there to kind of hedge your risk. Rule number three, no FOMO. This was an important one that we learned as investors in 2020, 2021. Fear of missing out. If it runs, let it run, don't chase it. If you think a stock is only worth $150, don't buy it at $200, wait for it to come. If it doesn't get there, it doesn't get there. You have to be disciplined because there's lots of different stocks and opportunities. You should have a watch list with lots of different stocks on it. And the ones that come to you are the ones you want to buy it. There's plenty of fish in the sea, is what I always say, but you have limited funds. You don't have a cash machine. You don't have a tree outside where cash grows on it. And so you got to be careful of fear of missing out. There's also full, which is fear of losing everything, which is what we're experiencing in the bear market, where people sell anything at any price because they think it's going to go lower and lower and lower, and they don't think about the long term. So careful of FOMO and full. Never be afraid to take profits. Now, I did some of this in 2021. And in hindsight, I probably could have done a lot more of it. And I actually thought that beginning of 2022 might have a little bit of carry through that didn't happen, but I was able to trim quite a bit. For example, Cloudflare, Discord buy at 35, sold it at 190, a, a big portion of it. I do have 300 shares of Cloudflare, but it's all house shares. In other words, I've taken my initial cost basis out as well as additional profit. It was a bagger stock for me. And I own 300 shares as what we call house money. So don't be afraid to take profits. Shave some profits when you think something's running parabolic. I don't suggest that you just liquidate a winner and just sell it all. If you're a trader, you would certainly do that. I'm simply saying take a few chips off the table. If it runs 30% in a week and you don't think that it's supportive, you think that it might come back, 
trim some of it off. You can always buy more shares. And if you don't have to worry about the wash rule, if you're green, well, you can buy at any time at a lower price. You know, you have to be careful of had, having bad habits and becoming a trader here. But what this is saying is like 2020, 21, you would have taken maybe 10 or 20% profits on your ones that ran and you'd be in a much better situation even if those stocks did come down. Okay, so you wanna make sure when it's frothy, take some profits, trim, you can always buy more shares and they go down. And this is important for performance as a money manager. And if, you, if you're running your own portfolio, you're a money manager, maybe not a professional one, but for your own money. Now this lady's got it figured out. Uh, she she uh, diversifies her portfolio to hedge risk. She's got some cash, although you have to be careful with having too much cash because inflation does eat into that. But you want to diversify. So what does that mean? I like to teach to have ETFs, have dividend stocks, have growth stocks, have spec stocks, manage those positions. So spec, you might have 10% of your portfolio with 10 different stocks, 1% concentration. So if a stock loses 50%, like you experienced maybe in 2021 to 2022, you're not completely destroyed because you're diversified. You have some quality in there, some ETFs, stuff that will recover and will bounce back. And you can diversify your portfolio with crypto, with cash, with real estate. There's lots of ways to do that. Rule number six, you need to separate all emotion from investing. Now, this includes dwelling on past decisions. And I see it all the time in Discord. We call it shoulda, coulda, woulda. I should have bought this stock when it was at this price. You know, what's funny is there was a lot of people two, three weeks ago saying, I should have done this, I should have done that. And now those, those stocks are at the same prices or lower, okay? So you have to eliminate and separate all that emotion from investing. I know it's hard, but you have to be robotic. Don't dwell on, oh, in 2021, I could have sold this at this price and I didn't, boo-hoo, poor me. That's not gonna solve anything, guys. So don't dwell on past decisions. The only thing you can change is today and tomorrow. The past is the past, chalk it up as experience and move on. You've got time to make it up. If you're watching this, you've got plenty of time. Most of you are probably in your, maybe your 30s, some of you are in your 20s, some of you are in your 40s and 50s, but you do have time. You're not retiring next year and you've got time. Don't dwell on the past, look to the future. Rule number seven, this is critical and I even see it in our private community. Some of the newer members, do your homework. Don't buy a stock just because I bought a stock or you saw an article somewhere or an influencer somewhere saying it's a good company. Because what's going to happen is you're going to lack conviction. And when the stock goes down, you're going to think the company's broken, but it might just be the stock price. and You might have bought it at the wrong time. So do your homework, do your due diligence. I always say you should have hundreds of hours of due diligence in a stock before you buy it. People will spend, you know, a hundred hours researching a new TV or a new refrigerator, but then they'll go on to Reddit and they'll go on Wall Street Bets and see one post and then just go buy something without doing any of their own homework or due diligence on the company or the asset before they buy it. If you can't explain to me or your friend or whoever, your spouse, your loved one, at least three good reasons to buy a stock in detail, you should never buy the stock because you don't understand the company behind it or the, or the stock or the asset. Patience is critical to long-term investing success. If you're listening to me, you've realized that by now because most people in retail, unfortunately, have given up. They buy the highs, they sell the lows, they take their ball, they go home, rinse and repeat, the rich get richer. This is something, unfortunately, I've seen many times, many cycles throughout my investing career. You gotta have patience. If you're holding on to growth stocks right now, they're not in fashion and you need to be looking at the correct time horizon, five plus years. If you lack patience and you can't do that and it eats you up and you lose sleep, hire a money manager. Hire a financial advisor to manage the money for you. There's no shame in that, that's why they exist. It's not for everybody to manage your own money. Expect corrections and embrace them. Well, guess what? When, we, when these rules were made, you know, probably 2019, we had a correction, of course. We had a mini bear market in March 2020, and this was very relevant, rule number nine. Now it's even more, more relevant than, other, and than ever. We've just experienced a pretty nasty bear market. We're still in it and we're not out of the woods yet. Expect corrections and embrace them. These are buying opportunities. Now, if you listen to this in 2021 and you're a new investor, it probably didn't really have much merit. You didn't think much up about it. Now, when you f reflect on these rules and look at it now and say, man, Eric told me this in 2020, it didn't really make sense, but it makes sense now, right? And eventually, if you have the patience and you expect those corrections, you look at them as buying opportunities, you're buying high conviction, high quality stocks, the profits will come, but it's gonna take some time. 
Okay, so you gotta have that patience. If you're already expecting a correction and you're embracing it, you're looking at it as a buying opportunity. You're not dwelling on the past, right? She's also got it figured out. She's swimming in money. Rule 10, always have some cash, AKA dry powder, five to 10% at a minimum. Been telling you guys this for years. Are you listening? A lot of you aren't. There's nothing worse than having no cash when your favorite socks are in a fire sale. Or let's say you jumped the gun after CPI in November and you, you chase stuff. I told you, don't chase stocks. We're still in a bear market. It's a bear market rally. Don't chase something that just bounced 50% in two days or in a week. That is not good investing at all, right? And you want to make sure you hold on to some cash because when your stocks, your favorite stocks come on sale, like they have been again the last couple of days, when you have no cash, it's really brutal. And it actually creates bitterness towards the market and resentment. You got to have some cash. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. The market runs, you got cash, it's okay. Cash is okay to have. You don't want to have, in my opinion, you don't want to have 90% of your portfolio in cash, but you should have five or 10%. And maybe if you're more conservative, maybe that number is 20%. It's really going to be up to you. The message here is have some cash. Always, always be prepared. Even if you're in a bull market, you're going to have an earnings miss. One of your favorite socks is going to go on sale and drop 20, 30% on earnings. You're going to wish that you could have grabbed a couple more shares, but you might not have cash and that's a problem. Rule number 11, cut your losses. Now, this is a tough one and I struggle with it myself sometimes. There's stocks like, you know, maybe Upstart where you're like, well, it's already down. I'm going to hold on to it anyway. I've seen the community in Discord. We have a trading floor where people, they share all their buys and sells. And over the last several weeks, I've seen lots of people cut losses on stocks that they've given up on that were maybe meme stocks or that they had high conviction on. At one point, it changed. Be careful with that. Don't let the stock price drive conviction. Ask yourself before you sell anything, is the stock broken or the company broken? If the company's broken, sell the stock. Cut your losses and move on if the story changed, right? But if you're selling it just because the stock price is down, be careful of that. But if the story truly changes, you lose confidence, you lose conviction in the future outlook of the company, don't buy more to try to help your cost basis because you you saw what happened here in the last year. There's a stock that you, you know is down 50% and you think, well, I'll just buy a bunch more and get a lower cost basis. And then it goes down again. A stock could be down 80% from its highs and still go down 50%. And that's still the message today. So do not just throw money at something. And this is why a blueprint is so important because if you're following the blueprint and you've already maxed out your cost basis, you should be using your cost basis, not the actual dollar amount of your portfolio today. So if you bought a stock and you wanted it to be 2% of your portfolio and you put in 2% cash at that time, you have to use that cost basis. If it's down 80%, don't make the mistake of saying, well, I can add you know, a bunch more to it to get it back to 2%. That's not the correct way to manage it. That's my opinion, at least. That's not how I do it. So don't buy more to help try to fix your cost basis. Cut your losses, move on. Repositioning that capital quickly into higher quality will allow you to recover faster. In other words, if it's a dog and you keep buying more and it just keeps going lower and lower, imagine if you would have bought something that turned the other way, you could have repositioned that capital and started working to getting that money back a much, much sooner than if you kept buying a dog. Number 12, you learned this one in 2021 as well. Beware of hype. This Thanksgiving compared to last Thanksgiving was probably very different. You probably were... Uh, you know, Thanksgiving last year, you're hearing about altcoins and Dogecoin and meme stocks and, you know, all these different growth stocks. Now, now this, this Thanksgiving, you know, you tell me, what did you hear this Thanksgiving? Very different message. You know, go to cash. We're going to recession. The world's coming to an end. Beware of hype. If your neighbor who casually invests or has never invested before the pandemic starts telling you about a hot stock, if you're in an Uber and the Uber driver starts telling you about a hot stock, you're probably too late and you're going to buy high and you're going to sell low. This also goes for social media, television shows, you know, even YouTube for the most part, you know, we'll make videos like stocks to buy now. When I say a stock to buy now, it doesn't mean it can't go lower. And I try to constantly tell you that, right? You, you look at um, the way the algorithm works, certain taglines have to be used if you want to have any views whatsoever. But I try to do my best to explain to you like, hey, I like this price of this stock. Or I like this stock at this price, 
but it can always go lower. I've been telling you that message over and over. It probably hurts viewership because you want a guru, you want someone to come on and say, buy this stock today and sell it in two weeks and make profit. That is just not what I do. I'm an investor. I try to find companies that will do well over a period of time, not necessarily a short period of time, but five plus years where the outlook is very strong, five and 10 years, not necessarily five and 10 weeks, okay? So just be careful of that hype. You probably know this now, but I've been telling you this, we, when the market was high and the market low, this has been the same message to you and I've been teaching this since 2019 when I started the YouTube channel back in 2019. Rule 13, focus on moats. Now the thing about moat though is people get it twisted, they get confused. I did a video recently, uh, I think it was top 10 high moat stocks and I'll put a, a link up here, you can go check it out. And it kind of breaks down the definition of what a moat is and I think it helps you understand because a lot of people get it twisted like and think every stock's a moat just because it's growing and has a moat. There's really not many companies that have a true moat. The one that sticks out is like a Coca-Cola. And even if it has a moat, it does not mean that that moat can't deteriorate over time or that's impenetrable. A moat can certainly fade with competition and with time. So the thing is here though, you wanna focus on best of breed. It might not even be a strong moat, but it might be best of breed. So there's a fine line there. We're really talking about moats and best of breed, which are two different things. But if they have little or no competition and they're best at what they do, it's probably a winner. But there are not a lot of stocks that truly fit into the definition of having a strong moat. Rule 14, don't let me or anybody else tell you the best strategy for you. So many people go on social media and they argue, you should do this, you should do that. The reason they're telling you that is because that's what they believe in and that's what they're doing. And that's their bias and that's their agenda. They want to have confirmation bias. They want you to agree with what their strategy is so that they feel better about their strategy and their own decision. That's not what I try to do. And I think with a, tr a I try to be a mentor to you and a true mentor is not going to tell you what to do. They're going to teach you what to do. They're not going to tell you what to think. They're going to teach you how to think. And that is the Fired Up Wealth methodology. If you do the masterclass, it's 12 hours of investing from A to Z, it teaches you everything I've learned over the last 20 years. And you can check out patreon.com forward slash Fired Up Wealth if you want to check that out. But no pressure either way. It's there if you want to check it out. The point here is that I try to be a mentor if you're a new investor, teach you about investing from beginner skills to intermediate to advanced, all the way to options trading and everything in between, okay? So when I say options trading, it's more options for long-term investing like cash covered calls, like cash secured puts. We don't do a lot of tr trading or day trading, occasional swing trading, but most of what we do on Fired Up Wealth is gonna be long-term investing, buy and hold, unless the story changes. Not buy and hold forever, buy and hold until the story changes. Or even if the growth slows down, that could be the story change. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track here. But try to learn from others. You know, read books, watch other podcasts, other YouTube creators, and learn like a sponge, and then try to make your own path. That's what I did. I had influences from people like Peter Lynch and Warren Buffett, even from, from successful traders. And I had, during the Masterclass series, I talk about all the people that influenced me, and I tell that story. But I've basically taken nuggets of information from numerous different places and I've created my own approach, my own methodology, and I try to teach my methodology. It doesn't mean you have to follow it to a T. You can take that methodology and make your own and tweak it the way you need to to fit your own needs, risk tolerance, suitability, all those different things. Because each person has different goals, timelines, and suitability. And rule 15, guys, before I finish here, this video was sponsored by The Motley Fool. And if you'd like to see the 10 best stocks to buy now, visit fool.com forward slash fired up wealth. They're a great partner. They don't tell me what to make, what videos to cover, what stocks to cover. They're a great partner. They allow me to do content like, like this here on YouTube for free for you to enjoy. And we've got that private community. I encourage you to check it out. We're doing our first ever conference in 2023. It's gonna be 14 sessions, 14 videos over the next 14 weeks starting in January that basically goes from the beginning of January until the beginning of April. That's gonna teach you everything about investing. We're gonna talk about things like growth stocks, spec stocks, crypto, macroeconomic conditions and environment. Um, we're gonna have people from the community that have actually retired on dividends. So fired up wealth, financial independence, retire early with dividends. We're gonna talk about that fired life. 
We're going to talk about entrepreneurship, some people in our community that actually started business. So it's going to be, you know, personal finance, personal development, investing, the whole shebang. That's what our community is about. But rule 15, likely the most important of all, you have to have a plan and you have to stick to it. And what I mean by that is once you have a plan, you don't want to change your plan, you know, change your plan just because of what's in fashion with the Wall Street fashion show. In other words, if you're a growth investor and now all of a sudden you're like, I'm going to sell my growth stocks and my dividend stocks, you're a dog chasing his tail and you're constantly going to chase cycles. The stock market constantly has, has cycles and there's different things that are in fashion at different times. Right now, when you look at 2023 and the trend for this year and going into next year, you know, profitability, high cash flow, high cash balance. You don't want any stocks that have no, you know, negative cash flow, free cash flow. They're burning cash that have bad balance sheets that don't have a P ratio, blah, blah, blah. You know the story, but be careful of just like going from hyper growth to like, I'm going to be a DGI dividend growth investor. Be careful doing that. Try to stick to your guns. And this is why I teach diversity, having ETFs, growth, dividend stocks, all that, because you can ride different storms. Some things are going to do better when other, others aren't. You know, like one of my top holdings is AbbVie. That stock is doing pretty well. Other stocks like, you know, some of the SaaS stocks, they're not doing as well. But if you understand why they're not doing well, I just taught this yesterday. I did a, a live stream for the elite community in Patreon Discord. We talked about SaaS stocks. They were at one point in 2021, over three times more expensive than their historic norm. So what they've done is they've really come back down to that norm and then taken a haircut off of that because of the recessionary environment. But if you look at the trading range they're at now, EVNCM revenue, you know, they're basically in an acceptable range that makes sense. They didn't make sense in 2021. Now the price levels make sense. If you didn't understand that and you bought the tops, well, now you're in trouble and you blame the stock or you blame, you know, Kathy Wood, if it's not a SaaS stock, she doesn't really do SaaS stocks, but you get my point. So I encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it already, because 2023 is going to be a great year. I'm going to do a lot more content like this for free on YouTube. And if you like stuff like this, join the private community. Like I said, we've got the masterclass series. We do live streams every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We've got chart day every Wednesday. I'm constantly in discord, constantly helping answer questions. But at the same time, I don't want to be the spokesperson just trying to push something. I'm here for you. I've got a free channel for you to subscribe to. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. If you have questions, drop them below because I'm always happy to answer questions, whether it's on YouTube, Discord, wherever it is. I do my best to try to help, and I'm really here to try to help you. That's, that's my goal in life. I'm financially independent, and this is how I'm trying to give back, how I'm trying to fulfill serving some purpose to the world. So let me do that and they allow me to do that by asking a question below about whatever you want. And if I don't know the answer, I'm going to tell you I don't know the answer. But, you know, I always get back to you. I reply to every single comment that I get. So I appreciate your time and attention, guys. Make sure you subscribe. Click the bell to get notifications. Drop a like. Drop a comment. Have a great holiday season. I might do another video this week, but Christmas is coming here this weekend. So hope this is helpful getting you prepped mentally for the new year. And have a great rest of your day. Take care.